Come here. Come here, friend. Shh. Quiet, though. You've heard of the FBI, right? CIA? Shh. Not so loud. What about the SIS? Or maybe the ISO? I'm going to talk about one of those when I come back. Shh. Quiet, though. They might be listening. The International Organization of Standardization, that's what ISO stands for. No, it's not some secret military group that's trying to overthrow small governments. The history behind the ISO is something we don't really need to worry about right now, but what we care about is how does it affect photography? ISO basically deals with the camera sensitivity to light. So the higher the ISO, the better you can shoot in dark environments, which we find ourselves in quite often. Now, the lower the ISO would be good for something that's nice and bright and you have plenty of light coming in. Let's jump to our example, shall we? I invited Peter back. He's our model. And right now he is completely blown out, overexposed. And to give you some basic settings, we're shooting at a shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second. F-stop is at 2.8. Those are a good starting point whenever you go to shoot sports photography. I'm going to start there and we're not going to mess with those because we are talking about ISO. So he's blown out. ISO is 51,200. Wow. So we're going to change that. With so much light coming in on the subject, we can probably drop the ISO way on down. Probably close to 320, 400. Should look pretty good. All right, there's 400. Not bad. That's probably perfect right there. Maybe 320. I like my photos a little darker than a lot of people. So we're going with 320. So we have proper exposure right now. And you're probably thinking, okay, Craig, so we have proper exposure. We're at 320. Probably don't have to touch anything ever again. And you are correct. We don't. Everything's set up perfectly right now. However, there are situations, and I'm about to give you a real life situation, which has happened to me numerous times. I was out shooting a soccer tournament, bright sunlight, got over about 2 p.m., had my ISO nice and low, probably around 200, I believe it was. And then I went from there, proper exposure now, inside to a dark gymnasium. So I went from bright sunlight to this. I had the shutter speed and the f-stop dialed in already. I didn't want to mess with those. So next up is the ISO. So what I did, I started raising the ISO and kept going and going. And you can see it's starting to look a lot better now. 4,000, 5,000, 6,400. 6,400 looks pretty good for this exposure now. So we have proper exposure once again, but there is one little thing you have to remember when you start getting to higher ISOs and that is called noise. You may be introducing noise into your image. Now, in most cases, it doesn't really matter that much. But some publications, some websites that you might be shooting for, they want a, a crisp, clean image. They don't want any noise, which right now you don't really see much, but there is some noise that is being produced from this image. If I took an image now and compared it to an image I took at 320, you would see some noise in the higher ISO image as compared to lower ISO, which I could do that with my model right now. But instead of that, let me show you some real life examples of a volleyball game I shot last year. So in this image, I'm using the Sony a6100 the Sony f1.8 50 millimeter lens. As you can see, 2500 ISO, even if we zoom in, it's still really clean. Now you're probably wondering, okay, so I don't understand what the difference is. What's, why, why is this good and why is a higher ISO bad? Well, this is the Sony a6000, 10,000 ISO. You can see all the noise that's being generated at such a high ISO compared to this one, which is nice and clean. Again, Zooming in a little bit. This isn't even zoomed in all the way, just some, but you can see the noise. So it doesn't make for a very good image. So you have to be careful when you're using high ISOs in certain conditions and with certain cameras. Some cameras handle the ISO a lot better. If you get the upper Nikons, the upper Sonys, the upper Canons, those are going to handle the ISO a lot better. Get some lower end cameras, you're going to have this problem. However, don't be so concerned at shooting at a high ISO that you don't shoot at all. It's better to get out there and shoot and grab something than nothing. And this is why I say you need to learn your camera. Read the camera manual. Make sure you're out there shooting. That's the only way you're going to learn your equipment and you can know what it can handle. And yes, I keep harping on this, but you need to get out and shoot. You need to understand your camera, how it works. How does it do at a high ISO? Maybe it does great and you won't have to worry about anything. Or maybe it has some limitations which you need to learn. Get your cameras and get out and shoot. That's why I keep saying it in every video because you have to do that in order to learn sports photography. You can't do it by reading nonstop or watching lots of videos. You have to get out there hands on and start shooting. Okay, now with all that being said, if you wanna learn more about Aperture, check out this video here or maybe shutter speed is what you need to learn more about. 
check out this one here. And as always, thank you, everybody. I appreciate each and every one of you. And don't forget, get out and shoot.